So the Highland Tiger, is it a myth or is it real? And the answer is that it's both. The Highland Tiger is a cat, is like a large cat up in Scotland. And uh, it's also really tied into a lot of Scottish myths. So there's the, the answer to the question. It's real and it's a myth. We'll be talking a little bit later in the show about what a highland tiger really is and then we'll talk a little bit about the myth as well so if you want to just skip to that part you can do so via the timestamps below or you can stick around for the start of the show where we'll be talking about some news from the past week we'll be talking about some big mining projects in england that have been switched over to renewable energy and we'll be talking about a reintroduction of wildcats that is going on this is eco show hello and welcome to eco show this is this is a show about ecology the environment and things generally happening in that space. Sometimes I go a little bit off of uh, off of that strictly, but we try to keep it to that sort of thing. So we uh, will go through news. And then we'll either have some sort of uh, thing or story at the end of the show. That's sort of a uh, a little highlight. So this week our first news article is about some mining conversion that's going on in England. So we're going in our little, uh, we're going either in our plane or we're taking taking the train to North Yorkshire. (laughs) I don't think that was a good accent at all for, for Yorkshire. I apologize to Yorkshire off the bat. So, but in Yorkshire, local folks were opposing a fracking project from happening from going on there, and they ended up getting it canceled, but there was this two-mile deep drill hole left over, borehole, that was left from parts of the start of the fracking project that was going to go on and frack fracking is a type of uh, way of getting fossil fuels out of the ground. So it was uh, it was opposed and they had this hole left over and what they did leave and it could heat up to 300 homes if it is developed. So what happens is as you dig deeper into the earth's crust, the rock gets hotter. And uh, at two miles deep, which is the depth of this hole, the rock is very hot and you can pump water down and then draw it back up. And that water, when it's drawn back up, can be used to heat homes. And then once it gets too cool, you just pump it back down and then reheats and pushes up more water and the whole process once you get it going can uh, be pretty doesn't really require a whole lot of electricity inputs so this one is just a uh, a prototype or a possible opportunity but there's a real opportunity real thing that's happening in the UK from using sort of a similar concept except uh, instead of a fracking borehole. This one is using an old coal mine. So Britain has a whole bunch of old coal mines that are left over from the days of mining for coal. And, uh, and one is being used to heat the town of Gateshead in England. And it's been doing so for six months. This, uh, This project has got launched in 2020, 23. I'm recording at the end of the day, so I'm a little, uh, 
I'm a little slow to the jump today. So, uh, so this project started in 2023. It's been going for six months now. And there is a large central heat pump that provides heating. And so how are they, how are you getting this from a coal mine? You ask, well, there's all of these tunnels that are left underground from these coal mines. And some of them are deep enough that like we mentioned before, it can heat up the water to some really high temperatures. So in some areas, it can heat the water up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 45 degrees Celsius. And the benefits of this is that it's down there being heated up by rock underground. So it's not a seasonal thing. It's not like summer or winter that really impacts it too much. So this, uh, this, this coal mine is being used to heat 350 high rise buildings, an art gallery, a college, an industrial park, and an office building. So this is, uh, this is really going a long way. And there are many miles of, of coal tunnels that are left from when England switched over to, um, switched over to oil and gas. So there could be lots of opportunities from, of coal mines to, uh, to do this sort of thing in the UK. The only trouble with this sort of thing is like, uh, bringing up a Balrog, you know, from the Lord of the Rings. So you could, if you dig too deep, at what point, uh, at what point will you, will you bring up, will you, uh, enliven a Balrog? That would be a good question to, to explore. Like something just fell. I don't know what it was. Um, (laughs) that was my sign that that was a bad, uh, it was not an entertaining thought, thought, uh, thought thing to follow. But anyways, yeah, so uh, at what point would you, like, use up too much of the energy? Basically, how could you, like, drain the energy from the core of the earth? This isn't, I'm not trying to be some, like, evil mastermind, but could you do that? And, uh, like, if you were going to run water tubes down around the earth and we're just going to be extracting heat or as I think is probably happening is that heat just being, would it even be possible to accelerate the amount of heat being lost from the core of the earth or is it just kind of emanating? Like does the crust of the earth insulate the heat from being released? Yeah. I don't really know what the core of the earth is. Do I? So this is, uh, you know, it's a big, we know it's big molten, big, uh, big molten core. How crazy is that to think about that? We're just, we're on the planet and I like to think about us and how space is above us and surrounding us, but I don't think enough about how we've got this super hot core of the earth that is down below us just cooking away. So that's something that's uh, continuing to happen. And another thing that's continuing to happen is that uh, wildcats, as we've mentioned what they are earlier, are being reintroduced in Scotland. So uh, 19 were reintroduced into the wild this summer. And they had been bred and uh, by the with the uh, Royal Zoological Society of Scotland, and they're doing this reintroduction as well. So these were thought to be functionally extinct from the wild, mostly because of habitat loss and because of interbreeding with cats. Um, but these ones are being reintroduced 
with some radio callers and um, and the YouTube version of the show will have some uh, we'll have some radio callers who <laughs> uh, well the <laughs> the uh, um, maybe on the YouTube I'll put uh, all I'm saying is on the YouTube show I may put up a clip of a uh, cat going by one of these tra- ca- trap cameras with the radio callers. What I was trying to do is I was trying to make a joke about radio, like people calling into a radio station because I had said radio callers and radio callers are like a collar that you wear around your neck that you can then be tracked with and that are used for animals. But whew, I'm just feeling the fill in the joke bucket today yeah so that is our our news for the week dun, dun, dun. I'm gonna take this uh, middle section of the show to pl- <laughs> to plug the show wherever you're listening or watching this show there's probably another place where you could be experiencing this show. So I just have to walk you through these options that you will have at your disposal. We've got this show on YouTube where you can see me occasionally look at the camera. Um, The YouTube will also have images of the things that we're talking about and occasionally some clips. Also, there's a comment section which has not been used at all. So it's just waiting for you to put your comments down there and uh and we've got this also and if you're just watching on youtube we've got this also on spotify apple podcasts and google podcasts you uh i'll put the link to it below but the easiest way to get to the listening of the podcasts is to go through the instagram link so you go to instagram and then i've got in the title there i've got little buttons that you can push for um, to get to those so you can listen to it there and if you are so inclined to follow the instagram page the benefit that you'll get is me announcing when i'm posting a show i'll also put up reels which will be clips of each show that are um, kind of entertaining and what's the other thing going on oh and sometimes i'll put up polls there so so there you go so there's the plug in the middle of the show for the show this has been the plug for the show in the middle of the show and now on to our thing of the week So our thing of the week this week are wildcats, also known as the Highland Tiger. Now this was once common across all of Great Britain and also Europe, this, uh, this wildcat. But it declined drastically around the turn of the 20th century with habitat loss and persecution. So these were um, these were all over the place, these these Highland tigers. Well they're called Highland tigers now, but they were wildcats all across the um, all across the England. And they were killed by gamekeepers to protect game birds. So like in Harry Potter you've got Hagrid who's the gameskeeper, I believe, but Really what gameskeepers were doing back in the day is they were making sure that there was enough game to be hunted and things like that. So they would would make sure that stocks of different game animals were being kept under control and were at good levels for folks who were going around hunting game. So these wild cats would go after birds and things like that, which would be... Uh, desirable as game so gamekeepers would kill these cats and uh, these 
these uh, cats would be reduced to small numbers in small and sort of remote e- regions, and particularly up in uh, up in Scotland, these had stuck around a bit. And when this work died out of being a gameskeeper, the they started to come back in range a little bit, but industrialization had already taken away a lot of habitat. And the habitat of these is that they prefer sort of mixed woodland habitat, while feral cats, so cats that are domestic cats that have just kind of are going out on their, going out on the prowl on their own, they prefer grasslands apparently. So, so you need woodland for these uh, for these wild cats, and so these ones that are in Britain used to be connected to European wild cats up to uh, seven to nine thousand years ago when the glaciers were lower but also sea levels were lower so the UK was connected to Europe so these uh, wild cats would go back and forth across from one area to the other and the physical differences of a wild cat from a regular cat is that it's a bit heavier than domestic cat. We'll have photos up. And um, it's got distinct stripes. And it's got ears that stick out to the side. So I think most of us probably will have seen a photo of a wild cat. But it almost looks like it's a cat that's ears are kind of like particularly pushed to the side. Because it's growling or something like that. But they're... Their ears are just out to the side, so they're a bit stockier, a bit more hardcore, if I may say so myself. And to wrap up this thing, the wildcat, as we alluded to in the title of this show, is also tied to myth as well in Scottish and Irish mythology, and it is... It's said to inspire cat Sith, and that's spelled like Sith, like um, the in the Star Wars, the evil stuff. So cat Sith, I have a feeling it's like cat Sith, but anyways, it looks like cat Sith. So that's what we're saying, and I do apologize if that's a poor pronunciation of that. Now this myth wildcat, this mythical highland tiger, was said to be black with white on the chest. And uh, and I forgot to mention this, but the wildcat has, it looks sort of like a tabby cat, but it has more distinct, more distinct stripes. And, um, and that's pretty much it. So, yeah. But anyway, so this mythological cat was black with a bit of white on the chest and was said to be a large cat. Some would say as large as a dog. And around humans, Cat Sith would walk on all fours and in private it would walk on two legs. This all made me think of the movie The Cat Returns, which is a Hayao Miyazaki movie. And is a is a great movie. I recommend you check it out. And it kind of is. Uh, it's kind of got this uh, cat thing, cat situation going on, like two on four legs around humans and two legs on its own. But anywho, so Cat Sith was uh, was said to be was kind of a there wasn't a good vibe around Cat Sith. I I think Cat Sith seems pretty cool, but people weren't stoked on. Cat Sith. Some would say that Cat Sith was a witch that can only change nine times from cat back to witch. Cat and back to witch until that witch would be stuck as a cat. Others said that Cat Sith are these mythical cats were witches that stole the stoles of recently dead. 
and keep away these witches, says Catsith. A family might sprinkle catnip around the house, except by the bed when a family member had died and the family member was laying in the bed, dead in that bed. They would sprinkle catnip to um, to entice Catsith to other areas of the house. They would also tell riddles with no answer, and they would wrestle and roll around to distract Catsith from taking the soul of the dead until they were able to bury that person. And our last myth tied to Catsith is that when folks needed a fortune told or something understood about the future, they would summon Catsith and to give them an answer to this. But they would have to do some really horrible things, which involved roasting cats for four days. Which uh, sounds like not a great time if you are a... Um, if you're a cat. But anyways, that's what folks would do to summon Catsith. And we're going to wrap up now with a uh, riddle or like a saying that would uh, that was vaguely related to Catsith. Okay, it's a little long, so uh, so stick stick with us. This is uh, King of the Cats. This little story. One winter's evening, the sexton's wife was sitting by the fireside with her big black cat, Old Tom, on the other side, both half asleep waiting for the master to come home. They waited and they waited, but still he didn't come, till at last he came rushing in, calling out, Who's Tommy Tildrum? In such a wild way that both his wife and his cat stared at him to know what was the matter. Why, what's the matter? said his wife. And why do you want to know who Tommy Tildrum is? Oh, I've just had such an adventure. I was digging away at old Mr. Fordyce's grave when I suppose I must have dropped to sleep and only woke up by hearing a cat's meow. Meow, said old Tom in answer. And old Tom was the cat that's sitting beside uh, beside the wife. Yes, just like that. So I looked over the edge of the grave, and what do you think I saw? Now how can I tell, said the sexton's wife. Why, nine black cats, all like our friend Tom here, all with a white spot on their chests. And why, and what do you think they were carrying? Why, a small coffin covered with a black velvet pall, and on the pall was a small coronet, all of gold, and at every third step they took, they all cried together, Meow, meow, said old Tom again. Yes, just like that, said the sexton, and as they came nearer and nearer to me, I could see them more distinctly, because their eyes shone out with a sort of green light. Well, they all came towards me, eight of them carrying the coffin, and the biggest cat of all walking in front for all the world. Like, but look at our Tom, how he's looking at me. (laughs) You'd think he knew all I was saying. Go on, go on, said his wife. Never mind, old Tom. Well, as I was saying, they came towards me slowly and solemnly, and at every third step kept crying all together, Meow, meow, said old Tom again. Yes, just like that. Till they came and stood opposite Mr. Fortis's grave where I was when they all stood and still and looked straight at me. I did feel queer that I did, but look at old Tom. He's looking at me just like they did. Go on, go on, said his wife. Never mind, old Tom. Where was I? Oh. They stood still looking at me when the one that wasn't carrying the coffin came forward and, staring straight at me, said to me, Yes, I tell ye, said to me, with a squeaky voice, Tell Tom Tildrum that Tim Toydrum's dead. 
and that's why I asked you if you knew who Tom Tildrum was. For how can I tell Tom Tildrum, Tim Toldrum's dead if I don't know who Tom Toldrum Tildrum is? Look at old Tom. Look at old Tom, screamed his wife. And well, he might look, for Tom was swelling and Tom was staring. And at last Tom shrieked out, What? Old Tom dead? Then I'm the king of the cats. And he rushed up the chimney and was never more seen. <laughs> Holy moly. So that's the king of the cats for you folks. And uh, there we have it. That's our show for today. I hope you've had a good week. I hope you made it through uh, through to now. And, uh, and we'll catch you all next time on Eco Show. Have a great week. Bye-bye.